Alrighty, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, and good evening, and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Welcome back to the First to Worst channel. Uh, my name is Earthium101, as you may or may not know by now. Um, yes, so today we have for you the wonderful, wonderful uh, Taco Ralph's run, who I am going to be commentating for alongside Baldrick. Baldrick is going to be moderating at the same time as his commentary role. So right now he is not with us. He is doing his best efforts and doing a fine job of moderating right now as we speak. But yes, just a quick recap for those who are unaware. Taco Ralph unfortunately got... I've got this right. Yes, unfortunately Taco Ralph got their... Um, had their first run knocked out in the first round with a one hit spawn locked run with that really, really devastating shot in the back. However, he has since been working his way up through the goulash bracket, as one would say, <laughs> as the um very much akin to a, the Doom Slayer making his way through hell <laughs> is the is the is the uh, connection that I've heard to him. But yes, yes indeed. So Baldrick is probably going to tell me when he is up and ready to go. In fact, what I'll do is I will deafen myself and quickly sneakily move into the main stage area and look at his uh, what's happening with him right now. So I've got that all ready to go. But yes, how are we all doing today? How are we doing so far? Hopefully you all have been doing well. I've been doing relatively well myself. But yes. Alrighty. So far, I'm just double checking this, in fact, because I have a feeling... Oh, unless I'm very much mistaken. Yes, no, Taco Ruff has been doing a... has done a one hit every run so far, so we may in fact be in... I may in fact be in uh, run for another one hit spawn locked run indeed. That seems to be Tucker Ralph's main weapon of choice for the run so far. But yes, we shall see. We shall see with their, with Tucker Ralph's um, opponent of Jeb, J H E B B 44. I believe that's how it's pronounced. <laughs> We've yet to see whether or not Tucker Ralph is able to do. Yet another survived one hit for us today. Alrighty. I believe right now he is just jumping into VR very, very shortly. So we will we will see what he's gonna be picking very, very soon. Ready. Um, Takarov is I'm um, going to be doing his run through Discord, so we will not have. Unfortunately, we won't have an alternative on Twitch that you guys will be able to see. So this will be this will be the only place that you are um, able to see Takarov's run live. However, of course, all runs, if you are not aware, are going to be on the First to Worst Archive channel. I believe you can just look that up using First to Worst Archive on YouTube. That is where all runs have been placed so far just for the ability for everyone to view. Alrighty. All right, right now, Tucker Ralph, you guys cannot see this, but right now, Tucker Ralph is currently just in, is in VR at the moment, but they're just going through the final finishing touches of uh, the all the moderator roles. So once once they're into doing their re rolls, I will unmute or undeafen myself, and we will be able to talk to our second commentator for today, which is Baldrick. So yes, righty. What else? What else can I talk about? I wonder. Um. Not too much. Yes. 
as I'm as you, I'm sure you're all acutely aware, we are we have entered phase two of the goulash bracket. Obviously, but that does mean that we are dealing with now three quarters as number of a part of contestants as we have previously. So unfortunately, we have it we had to say goodbye to thirty two um thirty two participants last week, but. As we've kind of echoed before, we really are appreciative of anyone who's participated thus far. And yeah, even if we have, even if it has been just a case of being knocked out first run, it really is just brilliant to see how many people, 128 people, sorry, 136 total contestants have all, all signed up, which is really, really brilliant to see and really, really incredible stuff. So we honestly do thank anyone who's joined in or participated or even just watched it is really, really um, incredible seeing that. CS. Looks like Tucker Ralph is going into their re-rolls, so I'm going to switch over to desktop view. I'm going to unmute this and hope so hopefully that's all going through. Whoa, that's voice me the potato. <laughs> yep, and I'm gonna undeafen myself. Alrighty. And Tucker is deafened. Excellent, splendid. Hello, Baldrick. Hello, how you doing? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Alrighty, so I wasn't quite able to get a glimpse of this, but let me guess, one hit spawn locked? One hit spawn locked, yes. Uh, not yeah. surprising us at all. Absolutely not, absolutely not. This is a man on a mission to redeem himself from first, from first round, I think. I mean, I think he did that last time as well, but, you know, he's got to keep it up. This is true, this is true. He's got a, a reputation to uphold at the very least. Well, we know yeah. that he doesn't do anything other than one hits. Ooh. This is true. Alrighty, straight into the first hold already. Analyzing system. I, mean, I have to say, this is one of my favorite guns in the game. Absolutely, the Rhino is, I would say, at least one of the best starter weapons, as opposed to the pump, the pump action shotguns, probably one of the best starter weapons you can get an operator, Ori. Oh, was that a tracking issue there? Uh, or, did you just, or did you just um, hit his trigger by accident? I think it That's was just chance. a yeah, slight re-grab, unfortunately. Bit. What are your opinions on Green Room, by the way, Paul Drake, while the static encryptions have just spawned in? I think it's a fairly easy room once you know the angles. And mm -hmm. I think he's got a, a, I think he's got a um, player body turned on. He does indeed. That should be all right. It's only we only see it when he looks up, really. So. This is true. I'm just wondering how long he's going to hold on to this gun for. Oh no, SMG. Not very, not very long, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good replacement to take over from the Rhino. Normally, I would try and hold off from of a one uh, three point SMG, but you know when you're tempted with that and a laser, there's and API, there's really no reason to <laughs> take to not take it. At this point, he doesn't really need anything else until the final hold. Um, this can take you through the final hold as well, but... Absolutely. There are better of... weapons once you get that far. This is true. A man of this skill, especially with something like API, you really don't need a... anything else. As you said, it's, it's just a case of you've got that penetration, you've got that rate of fire, you've got that capacity. This, this should provide him with no issues whatsoever, unless he doesn't check some corners, which I'm sure he will, then he's going to have nothing standing in his way. Is that one-handed? Is, is he just one-handing it now? He's got the laser. Yeah. Looks like it. Just one hand gangster firing. Of course, wasting firing. no time whatsoever getting into second hold. Absolutely I mean, not. As, as we said, he's got all the weapon he needs, so... Mm -hmm. He's a man on a mission, and the fact that no one... The fact that there's no reason for to hunt around for overload tokens anymore. If you've got the weapon you need and you don't need to change ammo, why even bother getting in the engagement? Especially if you're on a one hit, just to run straight to the hold. Hardened encryption detected. I don't know. I'd, I'd still clear out the um, supply rooms. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Well, the hardened encryptions are up, and that API just making really, really nice short work of that. Believe with forty-five ACP, I'm not sure if the the likelihood of um 
the penetration with API on hardens, but it certainly is quite significant. It does help. I don't know how much it helps with this caliber. Mm. Um, I know on high calibers, you can punch straight through with armor piercing. Absolutely. Well, I know as soon as you get up to something like 5.56 or the like, I believe even just FMJ can penetrate straight through. Ooh, a little bit of a audio switch up there. He thought it was coming from the from the stairs room, but they juked him out a little bit. Swarm encryptions are up. This it's is where surprising some... sometimes it can be quicker to not shoot the Sussex as soon as they exit the door. Start Absolutely. suppressing the Sussex behind. Mm. I mean, he's doing a one hit. He's not going to be too concerned about speed. It's survivability, no. for, first and foremost. Absolutely. You can't get a great score if you're dead. So. Absolutely. So, a few more supply rooms. Mm-hmm. Uh, old 2 was finished off nice and easily. Mm. So he's got a recycler here. Another S and G roll. Should want it foregrip. He's going for the foregrip, which, which... is interesting. I, I must. Yeah, I must admit. Could... Yeah, you can't use it on this gun, but um, obviously it can help later on, keeping a weapon more steady. This is true. I must admit, of, of all the things oh. that I. And a compensator as well. Brilliant stuff. He's, he wants stability. He's going for one-handed. He is, and he's doubling down on this weapon. He's got no second guesses, and it, as I understandably so. I mean, you're going into red room on third hold. You're really going to want as much stability and as much precision as you can. Wow, really just keeping his Very head on the swivel about there. Checking. Exactly. Very careful yeah. checking his angles. Absolutely. I know for a fact, even though I run a lot of one hits, I am not this proficient at being able to just keep my head on a swivel like that, but yeah. Also, opting as we go... Is too much. Hmm. I was going to say, as we... Oh! Oh, and the penetration... A little bit of trouble. A little bit of trouble with the shield there, but yeah. doing the job. Switching over to full auto, which I believe is a wise choice at the moment, especially since... Is this a 9mm or 45 ACP? I can never remember. This is a 45 ACP, I believe. Mm. Well, well, but the um, fire rate will help um, stun. <laughs> this is close. Holy moly! Taking cover behind the behind part behind uh, like the middle mezzanine, using a bit of a twin stick jump to just get a peek on that. Really trying to get that penetration in with the plus P API on that shield. Please Takes shot. him down and clears that out. Holy moly, that was close. Advancing to next system layer. Took a while, but he, I think he's gone back to semi-auto, uh, yeah. which is obviously going to be more precise in shooting. He mm. doesn't need the um, extra power, particularly right now. The shield sources have now dealt with. He's going to be shooting accurately, then he'll be taking them down with just one or two shots. Absolutely. Interesting choice to stay up on the high ground up here. I know just from experience holding up at this um, high ground in Red Room is very, very um, high risk, high reward sometimes, especially with the incidents that he's run into right here, where and he's, he's been able to deal with that very, very marvelously with the fact that you do have a little bit of a cursed ladder action going on. Where if you hold I mean, this. he's very competent and it shows. Um, you can hear that where the Sussex are coming from, deal with it. Absolutely. Um, I mean, for this phase of Red Room um, in Hall 3, mm. the Sussex are coming from one direction mainly. Um, this is you can true. hear that and react to it. If you're in, um, for example, the Agile wave in Red Room in Hold 5, it's a completely different story. Absolutely. Well, he's running into that. He's going to be running into that situation now. If we go into phase three of hold three, where he's going to be dealing with three sosigs per hold on with one each door. And you can see that by the change in how he's playing the hold, he's now taking a more defensive position, where he's he can still oh grenade coming in, where he can Absolutely. still um, react to what's going on around him, but he has a, a measure of protection 
from the rest Absolutely. of the room if he needs it. Absolutely, really, as you say, taking up that defensive position. And something that we um, don't really cover very often with the fact that he's going to have to be very, very careful with the fact that, well, maybe not if he can get those recursives out very, very quickly. They've spawned really close together, which is brilliant. Absolutely what you love to see. And he's done marvellous stuff. Yeah, good quick clear on that final phase there. Mm, absolutely. As you as a... already done with hold three. Um mm -hmm. boys gonna be coming out soon. Be interesting if he wants to buy a new weapon at this point or just and put this into reserve or just go what he's got. Mm. Well six, six point, point AR. Oh lucky Ooh. lucky roll in terms of magazines, but he can't use that foregrip on this either. No, sadly not. I believe that's or the laser. Or the laser, no. Although the compensator Compensate should have, you on the other hand. <laughs> will work marvellously on this. I forget what um, weapon this is, unfortunately. This is the... Um, the name has actually just escaped me as well. It's the um, machine gun that can always be configured as an assault rifle. Yes. Uh, the Stoner. The Stoner 63. The stoner. It's, yes. in its, it's in its assault rifle configuration as we have it right now. Hmm. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Honestly, in my opinion, probably one of the best AR rolls you can possibly get in Op Ori. Even comparison I... to some of the other systems, but that's just, that's per completely my opinion. I don't know that I agree, just because it doesn't have the flexibility of attachments. You can't put a laser, a red dot on it, or a full grip, for example. That's fair uh, enough. But that... it, is a, it is a lovely gun in terms of mechanics mm, mm. Um, clear. saw just that just recently he um sold off his revolver mm. he's clearly obviously not intending to use it again Dude, he's accidentally forgotten that he hasn't cleared out the hold there a little bit i think he was rushing in there with the intention of just running in and touching the hold but no such luck unfortunately when it's a room full of sosigs sometimes you can get away with that on arm swinger but with a twin stick one hit you'll not very likely to get away with something like that. Often get away with the twin stick as well. I do. Mm. Um, so you do have a reaction time. As long true. as you can beat bats, then you're golden. Absolutely. And with a cheeky little bit of a 360 no scope on that so sick, he's into wave four. Now something of just quick note by the way, I'm not sure if like I'm not sure, well, I'm sure that you're aware, Bodrick, but for the people who aren't aware, he has nothing but um, incendiary ammunition as the recursive encryptions come up. None of them at the stairs, thankfully, but with incendiary ammo, especially when he gets into some of the later holds when you get more prevalence of grenades, incendiary rounds can impact grenades and can detonate grenades with some close quarters of rooms, like this uh, diamond room and yellow room coming up, it can be quite an issue sometimes if you're not careful. I mean, in my experience, it happens fairly rarely. Um, I mean, if you're aiming for the head, you're unlikely to hit a grenade. This uh, is true. I mean, you're more likely to have it in a final hold on red room because your fire range, the inherent, um, not inaccuracy, but um, spread at range, the mm. ability to hold the gun perfectly steady. Um, is not perfect. But at closer ranges, you can quite easily focus your shots into the heads. Absolutely. So six. Well, the stealth encryptions are up. It's just clearing the wave first. I mean, that, that's what he needs to do. Absolutely. Dealing with them in short in short notice once the so six, once the so six were down. Yeah, really, really good speed on that. Analyzing really incredible system. stuff. He was um, pretty well off in terms of the spawn locations, though. They're all very close to him mm. and within his sight line. Um, it is definitely possible for them to spawn around the corner down the stairwell. Mm. Yeah, that's the thing. None of them were realistically down the stairwell too hard, and none of them were behind him either. So quite lucky, but also very, very skilled and um, skilled with being able to get that speed down. Truly epic run. It's a combination of luck and skill, always. Always. 
Well, we're going to have the agile for consistency um, mm. in terms of having a good chance of finishing one hit, for example. It's all, it's all down to skill. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's what we're seeing from Taco here. Uh, he got unlucky in the first round. But he knows exactly what he's doing. Mm. So here we can see him focusing down the so six first, giving him time to then focus on the Agiles. Yeah, and Not trying that... to get shots off and focusing on the wrong thing at the wrong time. Absolutely, when you get a little bit too concerned on the encrypt on the encryptions, then that's when you start running into troubles. Also, very very impressive that little hot swap to the um, little hot swap to the sidearm, so he could really utilize that laser. Was really really quick thinking and really really brilliant. Alrighty, well, hold five. Coming in and choosing to. Chuck a suppressor on the stoner. So that, of course, has the advantage of not suppressing Sossix coming in through different doorways. Mm. Um, it's a very good option, uh, especially in the hold we are heading for. Um, it means that the Sossix will keep coming around the corners and not slow their advance into the room. Yeah. Which means you can deal with each wave quicker. And as Yellow Room, one of the advantages about it, or interesting features about it rather is that mm. you actually have more enemies to kill yes. and so the faster they come into the room the faster you can get the kills off and the faster you can increase your point total absolutely also just a note there really 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 cool little um uh i guess something that uh, some people forget sometimes is the fact that if you're not uh, particularly experienced with h3 that getting caught mid reload obviously if it's a completely dry reload and you've emptied a mag it's a bit difficult but if it's not a dry reload oh i'm getting caught out by a patrol there you still always have that one round left in the chamber which i feel that some people myself included forget about if you're in the middle of a reload i often don't forget about it i do like to um leave it there mm. if i can so I don't have to worry with uh, releasing the bolt. But, I mean, if you need it, it is there. Absolutely. It saved my bacon in a run before, tournament run. Mm. Although in my case, it was, it was because I forgot to put a magazine in. <laughs> We've all had those moments in the past. But we are into hold five on Yellow Room. And as you said, we're going to be dealing with something interesting over the different, over the different holds where we're going to have more... More enemies per wave, and as you said, with such a small room, such as Yellow Room, that suppressor is really gonna earn its earn its way, or earn its keep rather, with the fact that with such a small room, you're dealing with such really close time, especially on the next wave. Alrighty, as my Discord is have, slightly crashing. I have audio, but no visuals. Yes. Uh, so yeah. he he obviously went into the stairwell and cleared out the last stealth there. Uh, we heard it happening. Um, we're now onto the shield round. So, it, unlike all other hold fives, um, Speed Meat introduces a shield again. Same shield we see in um, phase hold three. Uh, you only get this in, in the yellow room. Yes. On hold four and five. Yes. And as he's, as you kind of, um, we're starting to see here. This is one of the Speed Meats, even compared to something people say that red room um red room's uh, fifth is really, really difficult to keep on top of that speed meet yellow room fifth that pace is absolutely picked up to 11 with the um speed meet as you can see he is barely taking a break in between holds every time that he comes around finishes one off there is another round comes in also another thing to note as he's clearing out these encryptions the spawn times i've found out after running a fair amount of speed eight, the spawn times from what I've seen per doorway are actually independent. Oh! oh. And he's just gotten pre-fired coming out of that so doorway. So ob obviously just got a glimpse of him as he was moving back towards the door. Absolutely. Oh, really, really, That's devastating. really close. Absolutely. Shall we undeafen him and talk to him about that? Yes. All right, hi there, Taco. Who? How are you feeling? I went all right. Just missed one of them.
Yeah, uh, it happens. I think he must have got a glimpse on you as he was turning around the corner in the yeah. red room there. Um, a bit unfortunate, to say the least. Yeah, well, yeah, it's, it always happens, you know? Yeah. It'll be it, quicker on that one. Um, it's one hit, things can happen. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I got some good guns, though, so, you know, I at least I had a chance. Yes. Right, let me just get your score down. Absolutely. While Baldrick's doing that, I've just got a couple of questions quick to um, ask of you. Obviously, very, very good run, very, very incredible run. Just that um, little bit, little bit of that um, unfortunate mishap in the final hold. As you know, even it's just yeah. one little slip up can just completely blow through a a, a one hit run. Sure but, end. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it's just, and sometimes it's through no fault of your own, sometimes with. And so seeks just having that innate ability to sometimes just pre-fire like crazy if they know exactly where you are. But yeah, yeah, they're uh, they're on a schedule basically. <laughs> they see you, they'll shoot like at, at random intervals. Mm. I've noticed it too. Sometimes they just keep shooting too for like like ten seconds. Yes. Yeah. Um. Actually, this this winter with the winter wasteland, um, Anton fixed a load of Sosig code. Um. He changed how their accuracy works. One thing. Uh, in terms of really how they hold their weapons. Mm. Um, but he also fixed some code that he found that was broken that controls whether they panic or not. So they can mm. now um, panic when they see you or see their allies killed. Oh, I and, didn't actually know that. And that can cause them to just clutch the trigger. Mm -hmm. um, mm. Which That's is why right. you, you get these frantic bursts of fire sometimes. Well, it's also kind of my fault because I was just focusing on the, the encryption instead of the enemies. Mm -hmm. And we, we were say, just saying earlier how um, you were doing a very good job of clearing all the sausages before touching the mm. encryptions. Yeah. But, but At some point, just... I just forget it. You know, I, I just want to get yeah. the encryption done. And then I forget the enemies. Of course. Agile they're, they're, they're in Hold 5. You. Agile in Hold 5, of course. Um, it's, it takes a while to get them down. As, and the, the Sussex spawns are so quick. That's yeah. where the biggest challenge is, I feel. Um, yeah. And it seems that that got you today. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I mean, I still did pretty good. I think if uh, Butter actually uh, beats it, I think he will beat me because I think he's on one hit too, right? Uh, Butter has um, declared he's going to run one hit every time. So Yeah. So if he beats it, he basically beats me. So, <laughs> But uh, it's, still, it's a pretty good score. Yep. We'll so with 110,000 score, uh, 944, you have a final score of 127,585. Yeah. So we shall see. Can your opponent beat that? Oh, uh, see, I think so. Because when he's... I think he was on a scoreboard like yesterday, but the scores just keep getting updated so much lately. Mm. Well, your yeah, of course he he's come from the uh, Wieners bracket, so I'll just have a quick look at what he's done previously. So he did a he last ran a, a standard spawn lot and walked out with one hundred and forty thousand. So, um, he, if he does that again, then he he's the one to go through to the next round of the yeah. bracket. Well, then um, uh, we'll see. But anything could happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we. As you said, we shall see. Thank you very much for your run. All right, hey, you guys have a good day. Watch. Will do. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Just going to quickly jump into the commentator spot as I whoa, switch this over to. Uh, cool. There we go. All righty. Well, Taco Ralph. With a, as you said, Baldrick, a, uh, and I've lost it, 127,585 on a one-hit spawn locked, no complete. How do you think he's going to stand up? Uh, I'll be honest. If I was uh, going up against Taco right now, I would be very happy doing a standard spawn locked mm. and just looking for completion. Um, this is true. It's not... It's, it's, the, it's the problem with a one hit run. If you die, then you're score, it's very risk reward. Yes, and absolutely. At this um, this time, 
he hasn't re- he didn't get the reward mm. to, um so he's in a tough position here um obviously there's nothing else he can do right now yeah uh, just have to sit he's back got to rely on bit. his opponent making a mistake mm. which is one of the worst states you can be in yeah as you said, it's it's that kind of thing of high risk, high reward. And if you can put that pressure onto a runner and onto your opponent nice and early into the hold, then sometimes that can cause a bit of a slip up with their run, kind of if they're kind of like punching a little bit above their weight, not used to a one hit if you force them into that position. But as you say, it can also just kind of fall down on you a little bit and put you in a bit of a worse position. So, yeah. Yeah, Yellow Room is in a way a bit unique. Um, people think it's a relatively easy hold, and it is. It's very simple. Mm. You've got two doors. Sausage, mm. sausage come from two directions, and that's it. Yes. But they come at you thick and fast, especially on the speed meet. Absolutely, absolutely. It's it's as you say, it's quite a unique room because it, it's the only room. It's the only hold in the um, the classic take and hold map that has two entrances. So. It really, really does come down to a case of how quick can you reload, how, um, especially on a speed meet, how quick can you get those reloads in, especially on a spawn locked run, because it just, it, it turns into a little bit of spray and pray sometimes. I know for that's how I sometimes find my um, whole five rounds going. Also the fact that um, that stairwell catches so many players out with just how dark it is and the fact that if mm-hmm. you're if you're holding that corner for way too long and aren't pre-firing it you um so six have no trouble seeing you way before they uh, before you see them so it really I mean, does it need to... is possible it is possible to see them in the darkness oh absolutely um, yes. but this is this is the reason why clown so six are not allowed yes in this tournament because their noses glow and that gives you perfect firing solution yes um one thing that anyone listen to this might want to take heed of is that we saw taco um holding the the blue corridor doorway and then switching mm-hmm. to the stairwell you can do it the other way around and yes. that allows you to get a shot against the silhouette of the sosig at the bottom of the stairs yes before they really get into the hold um it does mean that you have to be quick at dispatching them so you don't get jumped from behind yes that is that is always an option that is that it is a very very um, good option but it's it does as you say rely on that extra ability to really get that accuracy um in because otherwise you have far less cover holding holding on the stairs side than on the corridor side so you really need to be confident on your speed and accuracy if you're holding down there but sometimes it is safer if you feel that you can land those shots really quickly and a suppressor would really help with that kind of thing because, as you said, as I so kind of said previously, especially on something like Yellow Room, you really have to take those into account. Those that complex timing of between the doors, especially since I'm I'm fairly certain, fairly certain that those spawning doors. That's another thing that's unique to Yellow Room. Those spawning doors on Speed Meet uh, have independent timers, from what I have experienced. So. It's not a case of all SOSIGs are dead, start the new wave. It's no, those specific sp- SOSIGs are dead, spawn in the next ones from that doorway. I've, I don't know that I've noticed that, to be honest. That's fair. I have to look. Mm. I, um, I, 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 I just know I, that I it's, a, it's a quick it. spawn. Yes. At the end of the day, yeah, it is just a really, really fast spawn. I'm actually wondering if the suppressor was actually a disadvantage to him there. Um, and it, it wasn't what got him killed. No, no, absolutely but, not. Um, we mentioned during the run that the suppressor um, can stop the SOSIX from being um, put under pressure. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, because the, when they hear your gunfire, they can become suppressed. Mm. With the suppressor on, they can't hear the gunfire as well, which means yeah. they actually come into the hold faster. Yeah. Now, that's better for getting a higher score, but when you're being rushed by so many, um, it could be a disadvantage. Just mm. slowing it down slightly, because um, as we know, if you finish off a wave of SOSIGs, it speeds up their respawn rate. Mm. 
um, it starts the respawn timer immediately as opposed to waiting for the inter wave timer. Yeah. Well, Takarafa. Um, I was just going to say, Takarafa has just said that suppre the suppressor helps with the confusion. And that's what I, I would tend to uh, agree with him a little bit on that is because while the, um, the, uh, the hearing loud gunfire um, can, uh, is often to spook so six, um, if that loud gunfire isn't necessarily directed at them, they can sometimes get the opposite, the complete opposite effect that I found is that they'll actually, they'll be able to, because they do have some level of audio, um, audio positioning and being able to pinpoint where you are roughly from the, from the sounds that you make. Um, because of that, you can actually have the opposite effect of rather than spo um, being spooked and slowing down a little bit, they can actually figure out where you are and bum rush you. So it is true. Um, although I've mostly found that with patrols and not mm. so six coming to holds. That's in, true. Uh, in my experience, that's how I, I feel it works most of the time. I yeah. know that patrols will seek you out mm. um, and aggro on guns, gunshots. So, yeah, well, I, but I believe the same, the same uh, kind of logic and the same AI applies to that. But I, I, I do feel that while a suppressor has advantages and disadvantages, it just kind of normalizes everything and makes it just a little bit more predictable from what I felt. Oh, that, that is, that is true. Um, and on something like Red Room, I think it works wonders. Yep. Especially when with with a suppressor, you're slight. You just at the longer distances, you're getting outside of that um that auditory range for the sosigs. So yes, alrighty. Anyway, well, anyway, um, yeah. Final words, Baldrick, before we wrap up for today. Um, no, <laughs> not really. Um, it was a great run. Absolutely. Um, I'm just glad to have seen it and hopefully we get to see it again uh, yes. not to wish anything ill against taco's competitor of course mm. um but taco has given us entertaining runs at every stage so far absolutely absolutely there's there's no doubt about that the fact that taco has given us a really really good show and a really really tense run every single time so absolutely something to look forward to every time that this man is on stage I mean, that's what you get when someone does exclusively one hits. This it's is going to be a good show. This is true, yeah. Well, next run, next run that we are going to be having coming up is uh, if I've got my sheets all the right way around, is Tess Snakera, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, who will be running in approximately two and a half hours' time. And going to be commentated here by the wonderful Mr. Putter, Putter, my pancakes himself. So, yes. Looking forward to so that. So, thank you well. for coming. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming, everyone. And we'll see you then. Absolutely, absolutely. And again, two and a half hours' time commentated by Putter. So, yes. But, as I said, on behalf of Baldrick and myself and the rest of the First West team, thank you all very, very, very much for watching. And, yeah. Have a good night, or day, or morning. See ya.